Nine players onto the field and the Denver Pioneers still in the huddle. Get ready to come on to the field and as soon as they come on out, that last 10 minutes went awful quickly. We will have some post-game interviews after this game. Jake Mosman will be the, the MC for that this afternoon, so we look forward to that. As I will be doing some directing at that point. And here we go with the second half of this overtime. And the Lobos will control it. They change sides of the field. And the Lobos going in the opposite direction here. And the Pioneers will get it back to their goalie. And he's going to send it out of bounds. Yeah, so I think the Lobos used a little bit of a surprise tactic there coming out with high pressure uh, despite being a man down. And it caught uh, Denver a little prepared there. Yep. Um, they turn it over in a bad part of the field. So Good. here comes the Lobos. They get it in to Gurule. And it gets sent back quickly. It goes all the way back into Kyle Vettner's. And he'll clear it out to the goalie. And the goalie gets it back to Vettner. Vettner over to and they'll continue to play this back to the goalie until they can get something up the field. And here it comes. So again, the Lobo's doing something a little unexpected, playing the possession game despite being a man down, trying not, got, not to give the ball up and um, not having to uh, chase uh, on defense. And again, and again, stepping up with high pressure. So, I, I think they feel that they're in good enough shape to play 10 minutes of very intense um, soccer with, despite uh, being uh, at a disadvantage. So here comes the Denver Pioneers battling hard against Ventner and he sends it out of bounds. That is Nick Miel from St. Pius High School. Yeah local prospect here. And again, Kudule trying to bounce here, right oh, here. Good nice look. Oh, that will go out of bounds, and that will go over. Goal kick to New Mexico. Yep. advantage of giving him a good rest to get him back into the final minutes of the game. Well driven ball. There's nobody there wide to win that second touch. But the Lobos continuing to play to apply pressure pretty high. Look how high the defense is here. Yep. Denver continuing to control the ball well now and then nice stolen turn away here. By McKendry. Too much for Kafari to catch up to, and the Denver Pioneers get it right back. Denver with the attack. There's a man on the other end, headed out of there, and goalie easily takes care of that one. It was a, a good job by Nicholas Ruchowski there, because um, that was looking like that ball had a good chance of getting through and putting the goalie in a bad spot. But um, he didn't lose track of his man, and he won that off his head. Ball goes deep, Kafari trying to get to it, and Denver quickly takes it away. And here comes the Denver Pioneers. And Gudulez chugging, chugging, struggling a little bit now. He's done a lot of running. Kind of hard to uh, keep it up at this altitude and this cold weather, this wind. Um, kind of tough to play at that pace for this long a time. Definitely, especially into the, the second players, overtime. Yep. Players stretching, trying to keep them cramping up. A lot of players really exhausted at this point. And now they bring it in. And it's going to go the other way. Trying to hold the big guy back from doing any harm is Reed Hakari. And quickly into play is Rakowski. And, and then here. 
Here's Goudoulet. Plays it in quickly. Oh, oh just pass. It looked like he decided he was offside and did, chose not to go after that. And now again, the Pioneers on the attack. Nice this time ball. he got a runner up nice front. And just... And a good job by the defense, Kyle, Kyle Bender, showing his experience there and reading that pass perfectly. Good job by Kafar. And it's there's a penalty. High kick. On that high kick. And here comes Denver with a pass on a, on the left side onto the middle of the field. Oh, good job by the goalkeeper. What a save. That was a perfectly executed cross pass, and the goalie was up to it. That, yep. was, that was incredible. And then Goudoulet goes down. Looks like challenge. he's cramping up. Chris Goudelet struggling now a little bit. I think that was a result of another hard challenge there. The referee spotted a foul. Um, I didn't really see it, um, but apparently there was some contact there, and he was the smaller guy. Yep, he got the brunt <laughs> of that one. The smaller guy usually loses a collision. <laughs> <laughs> Hikari Reed uh, goes out of the ball game, and he gets replaced by Casey Espinosa. Bonava. The Lobos are probably happy to see him go out. And that will go from goalie to goalie. And then... The Lobos are in pretty good shape here. They got all the runners accounted for. And that will go all the way back to the goalie, and he'll chase this thing yes, down. He wasn't taking any chances. Speedy, uh, number 12 there, uh, has been a real thorn. Hugh McHugh, Logan McHugh for... Uh, Denver has really um, created some uh, challenges for the Lobos to keep track of him. He's fast. So again, the Lobos will control the ball here. Kafari comes way back to... Good job of finding somebody there. This back to the goal. A back kick. And that will go out of bounds. Lobos will get it back high on the left side of the field on their side. Let's see what they can do. 3.46 left in the overtime period. The yeah, Lobos and are um, kind of used to this uh, type of game. They lost to Air Force in a, in a similar situation in the second half of the overtime um, for the conference championship. They lost to Connecticut in the second half of the overtime uh, in the second round of the NCAA playoffs. So not unfamiliar territory for the Lobos. <laughs> Here comes the Denver Pioneers on the attack. They get it up front into the middle of the field and it's kicked out of bounds. Stace here is with the Denver Pioneers. Three minutes left in the overtime period. Shots remain and they'll kick it around here at the top and there's a shot, nothing there. Well done by the goalkeeper and he's been very solid in this half and in the overtime. Created by a lack of pressure. Big kick. And there the goalkeeper can't use his hands as the other you know, his teammate plays it off his head to him rather than his feet. <coughs> Good job turning it over there. And it's still a battle and for forth it. and kind of Denver one comes up with it. One man up front. Good Nothing job. there. Doubled up there. is again. Both teams playing hard. Lobos have managed to stay in this thing even though they're one man down. And that's good space for Kavari and he turned it over. Not, probably not the best choice there. Good job of shutting that shot down. And, and under two minutes now in the ball game, uh, we think. Overtime period about to exhaust. 137 and ticking away in the overtime period. And Lobos with possession at this point. Getting it on down. And then that was off someone's hand, but they quickly get it in play. And the Lobos quickly kick it out of bounds. 
Bender has been solid in the back. That, that defense has been solid in the back. Um, you can see they're playing with three defenders now, pushing the extra player up into the offensive um, uh, attack, trying to trying to create a scoring opportunity. One minute with, remaining of the final. With time uh, winding down. Yep. One minute left in the overtime period, so we'll see if this will end in a 0-0 tie or we'll have some penalty kicks or kicks to finish the game. And here it goes all the way down the other end, picked up by the goalie, sent flying for Denver, 39 seconds. Both boys are back in good numbers, five players back. Nice header there. Seconds left. Good job there. And here we good go. Job of holding that. And this one is 19 seconds away. Deep kick, and that will go out of bounds into Ten, the other field. Nine, eight, and we seven, have the countdown six, by the public address five, guy, and four, three, that two, will pretty one. much do it. That's the end of the overtime period, and let's see what they're planning to do here, whether they're going to let this thing end. It looks, it looks like it's over. It looks like they're offering their good games there in the middle of the field. All right, I think we're going to go ahead and successfully finish this on behalf of uh, townsports.com and the Sports Alliance and Choice Wireless. We want to thank everybody for tuning in uh, to this 2013 extravaganza, soccer extravaganza here in beautiful Taos, New Mexico on behalf of Jake Mossman and myself, Rudy Baca. Thank you everybody for joining us here this evening. Uh, we're going to do a couple of post-game interviews and again, Jake, any final words? Uh, it was um, great to have these teams uh, play here in Taos. I, I love the opportunities that it creates for our kids to get to see this level of soccer and I'm, I'm happy for it. I'm glad they hope they keep coming. Well, Jake, I appreciate you helping on the program and couldn't have done it without you. Thank you. Thank All you right. Adios, everybody.